Do you know in Entity 360 application, how are these different service phases are getting invoked? If not, then you are at the right place. In this today's session, we are going to understand how these different service phases are invoked in the Entity 360 application. In order to invoke these various phases in Entity 360 application, we have to develop external call code. And once you develop the external code, code which is developed in the Java, we can invoke these various phases. So as we can see, there are several phases available such as write CO before everything, write CO after validate, then we have the before validate. Let's understand what are these different phases. Write CO stands for if you're making any write operation using business entity, then you can use write CO operation. If you are going to use business entity view, then you have to use write view in order to make update using the view. For example, write view before everything. In case you would like to make a read call using business entity, then you have to make read CO. And on the same line, if you are using business entity view to read the data, then you have to use read view operation. Then we have the merge CO for the merge operation. And then we have the preview, preview merge CO for previewing the merge data. Now, there are several operations we perform using Entity 360 application. For example, searching the record, updating the record, creating the record. In such scenario, which will be the phases getting invoked? That is what we are going to see in today's session. For that, I have already developed an external call code and I have configured using the provisioning tool. Let me show you the provisioning tool details first and then I'll show you the code. First of all, I see the SOAP service I have configured, which is a party external call. It is using custom logic as a service. Once we configure the SOAP service, then we have configured the WSDL. We can see the WSDL is already configured. It doesn't matter the local host here. So on which server we have deployed the uh, external call code, the same server will be used to access the Entity 360 application. So this should be working fine. Then we have the external call code. So in the external call code, we have to configure if you are using this specific external call code for the customer or if you have any other domain business entities, or the views you can configure under this. So for now, I have configured the business entity customer and the customer view. Let's go ahead and see the custom code. Here is our custom code, external call. Within that, we have the several classes which will be used for making the custom logic. The one of the logic which we are going to review into this session is nothing but how the different phases will be invoked and those will be available in custom logic factory IMPL. This is what we have written code. So by default, it will not come like this. You have to write this code. You'll get some basic template like this class with the default constructor and then create method. Under that create method, we have used the logger such as CLF0002. You can use any keyword here. This is what I have custom written. Then we have configured various phases. So what are the phases we saw in provisioning tool? Same thing we have configured here, such as write CO before everything, write CO before validate, write CO after validate, and so on. Under the each phase, we have written one logger, like CLF00001, inside write CO before everything, inside write CO before validate, and so on. If you are invoking view, then it will invoke different uh, the phase. If you are executing a different business entity, then different phases will be executed. Now the question is whether the, all the phases will be invoked at one time or one phase executed at a time. So let's see that in demo. For demo purpose, I have configured a customer 360 application using the business entity. So let's go ahead and see. So I just logged into the Linux terminal. So we are logging our all the logs in JBoss 
server logs so here in the jboss server logs we have server.log file so all the logs will be captured in that file i'm using this grep command and clf00 the clf00 is coming from our code so i just going to grab this so that it will print 001 002 and so on okay so let's go ahead and perform very first action we are going to try to create a completely new record using entity 360 application and see what are the phases it is going to invoke so for that let's go to do the entity 360 application one of the thing i would like to point it to here we are uh, at this time 2 12 pm so because we'll be logging multiple time so the logs will be captured at a different time interval so we'll make sure we are capturing correct time to understand all those events let's go ahead and create a completely new record the customer here let's provide some sample value and let's see whether anything is generated so i just provided the value but i did not hit any apply or anything so i'm going to just generate it now so the time is old time so we can ignore that let's go ahead and i will click outside i'm not going to save it so i'm just clicking outside so now there are some of the cleans function got invoked and it populated the customer name successfully let's go ahead and see the any logs right now it's a 213 let's go ahead so let's check the 213 logs so this is the logs because the server is behind the current time so we can see the 1213 this is the correct time so we can so whenever we create uh, the populate values and up, click on outside then first of all it invokes inside right view because we are using the business entity view it first called before everything you can see it's a before everything then it goes the right view again then it called before validate so first it is before everything then before validate then it calls after validate and then it calls before everything then it calls before validate then it's called after validate after everything if you see here it first call the right view and then it calls the right CO. So it's very important to know. And the very last it call after everything, which is a view. So first it calls three views before everything, before validate, after validate. Then it start invoking the composite object or the business entity. That is before everything, before validate, after validate, after everything and then it finally calls the view after everything so the sequence is very important to remember okay so this is the for just applying let's go ahead and click the save button for that i'll just clear the screen and i'll make the time note it's a 250 now let's go ahead and click save button so i'm going to click save at 215 it has some workflows so i'll just go ahead let's go ahead and click save button now record has saved so let's go ahead and see the events after 215 so after 215 i can see the events are here so it first invoked the right co before everything then it called before validate then we have after validate which is again the all three views then before everything before validate after validate that's again the business entity or composite object and then we have the after everything so whenever you click outside it is sequence of the events or the sequence of the phases is the same so when you click the save button okay now let's go ahead and edit some of the record and see some other events. 
For that, I'm going to search some records and let's see what events will occur when you search a record. I'll be going to the search. I just click the search query. Let's see if any event generated. So there are no event generated. That's fine because we are not working with any business entity right this moment. Let's go ahead and search this search customer. I'll verify if there is any event. No event when you click on the search query. I'm going to provide some value here. I provided test and I'm going to run the click this run button. Now it's a 218. Let's see. Now the results are back. Let's see the data or the sequence of the phases execution. Let me clear it. So for each record we got before everything and after everything. It is just slightly different because uh, the sequence, it's maybe just a matter of timing, but the only before everything and after everything, these are the events captured for all the records. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's open one of the record and see what it generated. Right now it's a 219. I'm going to select the first one. Okay, it opened the record. Let's check the events now. So 219, there are several events generated. We have the inside read CO after everything, inside read CO after everything in the same. Read view is there before everything, view after everything, view after everything. So what is happening is it's reading both the CO and view. So we have the after everything and before everything. Let's go ahead and update it. It's a 220 now. Click on the edit and let's provide some name here. I'm going to click outside. Again, it will execute the sequence which I explained to you earlier, the one which we discussed when we saw during the create operation. So let's see the 220. So for the 220, it first generated inside a read view before everything, view after everything. Okay, and then we have read CO before everything, after everything, for or after validate and so on. Then it went into inside the view, after everything, after everything we have the three events, and then we have before validate, before validate, then we have the CO, before everything, before validate, and after validate. So these are the different phases are getting invoked. So again, if you save it, it is going to cause the similar actions. So in short, the sequence is nothing but it first called before everything, then it calls before validate, then it calls after validate, then it calls CO related object uh, events. And after that, it calls after everything on the view. So I'm going to capture all those details and I'll mention in the comment section of this video. Um, if you need these details getting captured in PowerPoint, let me know. I will be more than happy to capture it and share with you all. So I hope you got some idea about how these events are getting captured so that you can write the logic respectively. Thank you again for watching this video. If you have any questions or queries, definitely mention in the comment section of this video. Thank you. Have a good rest of the day.